Hi there, my name is Jason Harlow. Uh, this pre-class video is on chapter 5 of Wolfson, the last two sections. Okay, and so the sections are 5.4 on static friction and kinetic friction, and a little bit on rolling without slipping, and section 5.5 is on drag force. And uh, the quote above is, at the microscopic level, friction is complicated. The simple equations that we will provide here uh, provide uh, approximate descriptions of frictional forces. So let's get started. Okay, so here we have a shoe that is pushing on a wooden floor, but it doesn't slip. And I guess the wooden floor is pushing to the left on this shoe and propelling this guy forward. So on a microscopic scale, no matter how smooth something looks, it's actually rough. And you can see, I guess, this highly zoomed in picture of the shoe. It's got all these um, spikes hanging down, and the wood will have all these spikes pushing up. And these two features will touch each other and even stick together a little bit. And this produces a, a force that's parallel to the surfaces uh, called the static friction force. And if you increase the normal force, it can push these surfaces together even a little bit more and lock the, these shapes a little bit better and per also increase the contact area. And so the maximum size of this static friction force can increase. So uh, this, this is a picture of someone pushing a box towards the right with some force. The box is sitting on the floor and it's not moving. So there's the free body diagram of the, of the box. Uh, there's a normal force from the floor pushing up. There's the force of gravity downwards on the box. There's this pushing force to the right. And <coughs> if you look at this, if it's at rest, there must be a balancing force uh, pushing to the left. And that's going to be the static friction force. And just, uh, just from looking at Newton's uh, second law there, uh, F net is mass times acceleration is zero. The static friction force must be equal to the pushing force. And the direction is just opposite to the direction that the object would slip if there were no static friction. So if there was no static friction, uh, the box would slip to the right. So static friction provides a force opposite. So keep in mind that static friction acts in response to an applied force. So if you don't push the box, there's no static friction. If you push it to the right a little bit, then there's a equal and opposite static friction force that gets uh, provided in order to keep it stuck in the floor. And as you push more and more, the static friction grows. And there's actually, we're going to find out next slide, that there's a maximum size to the static friction force. And then if you push more than that, then, then the box does start moving. So <coughs> uh, an object remains at rest as long as you're less than this uh, maximum static friction force. And it just starts to slip when you reach uh, Fs equals Fs max. And a static friction force that's greater than Fs max is not physically possible. OK, so there's an approximate equation for predicting Fs max, and it's based on uh, the normal force. So the greater the normal force, uh, measurements show, the greater this maximum static friction force. And remember, that's because those two surfaces, the shapes there, are locking together a little better if, if you push them more. And there's a new proportionality constant here called mu, um, mu sub s. That's the coefficient of static friction. That's just a dimensionless number that uh, relates the size of the maximum static friction to the normal force. So let's uh, see if you can do this calculation. If you try to push a 10 kilogram box and the coefficient of static friction between the box and the floor is 0 0.20, what's the approximate minimum force that you would have to apply in order to just get the box moving from rest? So take a pause, maybe whip out some paper, try, try to do this, and then I'll tell you the answer. Okay, so the answer was 20 newtons, and the way I got that is I used the equation, Fs max is mu sub s times n, and now, if you think about the free body diagram of the box, there's a normal force pressing up, and there's a gravity force pressing down. Uh, those are the only uh, vertical forces on this, and since uh, F net in the y direction is equal to zero, because it's not accelerating up or down, that means that the normal force in this case 
is just equal to mg. So it's mu sub s times mg, so that's 0 0.2 times 10 kilograms times 9.8, that's approximately 20 newtons. Okay, next is kinetic friction. So now let's consider a box, this gray box, which is sliding to the right on a wooden floor. On a microscopic scale, both surfaces are rough, and what will happen here is that these uh, top surfaces of the box will collide with the, the floor. And as it's doing that, uh, there's a thermal energy produced, there's the sound, sort of a rubbing sound, and there's a force produced parallel to the surface called the kinetic friction force. And it turns out that if you uh, increase this normal force again, you increase uh, this kinetic friction force. So measurements show that uh, the kinetic friction force is, is approximately equal to mu sub k times n. Mu sub k now is another coefficient, also dimensionless, called the coefficient of kinetic friction, and n is the normal force. So here is this uh, box again. Now she's pushing with this big force F push. There is a normal force up, force of gravity down, and now there is a, a kinetic friction force pointing backwards. But they no longer balance, so there's a net force towards the uh, direction of motion here, um, so it's, it's, it's speeding up or accelerating. So the kinetic friction is always directed opposite to the relative velocity of the uh, object on the surface. And for any particular pair of surfaces, we have we tend to find that the coefficient of kinetic friction is less than the coefficient of static friction. So often, here's a graph here showing a typical uh, plot of time versus the frictional force as you uh, push an object more and more and more. So as time goes on, you, you start with zero force. As you're pushing, as applied force increases, the static friction just responds by being equal. And so they go up at uh, this slope of 1 until it reaches uh, mu sub s times n. That's the maximum static friction force. And then the whole thing starts speeding up until it gets to a constant speed where the friction force equals this this uh, applied force. Now, now the object is moving with a with a constant speed. Here's just a table showing some uh, typical coefficients of friction um, uh, for rubber on concrete. The static is one. The kinetic is 0 0.8. Uh, you can see there's steel on steel. Uh, it depends what the if the surface is is dry or wet. Um, ice on ice would be the lowest here, static friction 0.1, kinetic friction 0 0.03. That's why things are so slippery. Uh, ice is slippery because the coefficients of friction are a lot less. Let's do another uh, question for you. Let's say now you're pushing a 10 kilogram box across the floor with a uh, force of 20 newtons. And the coefficient of uh, kinetic friction is 0 0.1 what would the approximate acceleration of the box be? So definitely you should take a pause. You'll have to work this out with some paper, and then I'll tell you how I got it. Okay, so the answer was uh, one meter per second squared forward. The way I did that is I found this, the kinetic friction force is mu sub k times n, and because the vertical forces balance, the normal force is mg, so it's 0.1 times 10 kilograms times 9.8, that's about uh, 10 newtons. That's the backwards kinetic friction force. So if you look at the net force in the x direction, where plus x is, is the way you're pushing it, there's a positive pushing force of 20 minus this kinetic friction, so 20 minus 10 equals plus 10. The net force is 10 in the forward direction. And then acceleration is just net force divided by mass, 10 over 10, plus 1 meters per second squared. Okay, rolling without slipping. So if you slam on the brakes so hard that the car tires uh, slide against the road surface, you'll hear a big screeching sound like this. And that's kinetic friction. It almost never happens in real life that you screech your tires. Under normal driving conditions, 
uh, the portion of the rolling wheel that touches the surface is actually stationary. So this is top part of the wheel is, is rolling forward, but it's rotating about this bottom surface, which doesn't move. That's how you drive. So if you are ever accelerating or decelerating or you're turning and you want to compute the, uh, sta the friction force, you should use static friction for the road on the wheels. Okay, last section is drag. So this is sometimes called air resistance. The basic idea is objects moving through fluids like water or air experience a drag force. Faster objects experience a greater drag force. So if you have this fast BMW going towards the right here, uh, there's a significant drag force pointing towards the left. And that depends on the size of the car and the shape of the car and, uh, and of course also the speed. So, uh, and the direction is always opposite of the velocity of, the relative velocity of the object through the fluid. So, if you just have a falling object, as the object falls faster and faster, the drag, upward drag force gets bigger and bigger until, if it falls far enough, it'll eventually reach a, reach a speed at which this drag force from the air is equal to, and in opposite direction, to the, the weight or the gravity force down. And at that point, the net force is zero, so the object is falling at a constant speed. We call that the terminal speed. And so here's a plot uh, for an object falling from rest. Uh, at first, the slope of this V versus T is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. That's uh, when there's not very much drag force. But as it falls faster and faster, the drag force increases, and the, and the net force is no longer the weight, so the acceleration gets less and less. And that it asymptotically approaches this negative terminal speed. And that's it for chapter 5. I will see you in class.